Aside from scorching temps this week, water temperatures broke records this week in the Gulf. How does that fit in with the insurance crisis we've been talking about all this hour? Water temperature affects the strength of storms. Insurance companies are watching those future forecasts. And so is Local 10's hurricane specialist and storm surge expert Michael Lowry making his This Week in South Florida debut today. Michael, hi, it's great to see you. Hey, Glenna, thank you for having me. Great to be here. You are the man of the hour, apparently, this hour. So put those pieces together, rising Gulf waters and, and water temperature. What does that tell us about storm strength? Well, it doesn't tell us much good about uh, storm intensity. You know, the thing about hurricanes, especially in the Gulf of Mexico, is that just because we have warm waters doesn't mean that we're guaranteed to have big, strong hurricanes. The problem is hurricanes happen every year. And if, when one gets into the Gulf of Mexico, with the waters being as warm as they are, it tends to promote and to encourage those storms to get really strong. Uh, not only do they get strong, but they can get strong really quickly. Uh, and we've seen this the last several hurricane seasons, these rapidly strengthening hurricanes from Hurricane Michael in 2018 to Hurricane Ian last year. And when they strengthen really quickly, we have less time to prepare. So it's not a good recipe going into the peak months of the hurricane season. So is it strength or might it be strength plus number? Well, you know, the number of hurricanes generally is affected by the broader water temperatures in the Atlantic, the greater Atlantic, less so across the Gulf of Mexico. But even those have been off the charts this year in terms of the record warmth. The one good thing, Glenna, that we have working in our favor this hurricane season is there is an El Nino in the eastern Pacific. And usually when we have El Nino conditions, which is just the warming of the waters in the eastern equatorial Pacific, that tends to shut down or deter activity uh, in the Atlantic, but not completely shut it down. It just sort of helps to reduce the number and the frequency of these hurricanes. The problem this year, though, is that when we look at what's happening across the Atlantic, it may actually act to counter uh, balance what's happening in the Pacific. So the forecasters are still, despite the El Nino in the Pacific, still calling for a very active hurricane season in the months ahead. So for our purposes this hour, Michael, we are talking about all the state of your insurance. In South Florida and Florida, it is a crisis right now that is being fixed in many ways, as you might have heard, or trying to be fixed. So mm -hmm. for, our, for our purposes and through that lens, the insurance forecasters, the insurance uh, investigators are looking long term to be able to, you know, the actuarial tables. They're trying to figure out how much to charge, what is their risk. Is it even possible to predict the kind of storms and activity through that lens for the long term? It's tough, but you know, the insurance industry, they do have their own catastrophic models, mm -hmm. uh, climate models, if you will, that look into the future and see what based on the ocean and the atmosphere modeling out, you know, 50 or 100 years, what the possibility of uh, storm frequency changing or the intensity of, of these storms changing might be. And, and those models are can be in some instances from a big picture level um, uh, pretty good uh, in terms of their accuracy and and their usefulness in these sort of exercises. And the problem, Glenna, is that we can't tell you, um, you know, certainly can't tell you in some instances just days in advance where exactly a storm will hit. And I often liken hurricanes to bananas. They come in bunches. Um, and when we get them, uh, sometimes they can, you know, you can have an area that hasn't seen a hurricane hit in uh, 100 years, 50 years. And then all of a sudden you have two or three hurricanes that have hit the same area in a matter of years. And in 2004, we saw it with Francis and Jean, pr pretty much the same area there in um, East Central Florida. And then in 2005, um, Hurricane Dennis hit the, pretty much the same area that Hurricane Ivan hit in 2004. You know, I'm, li I'm listening to you. I think that's a problem for... I know, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry, it's tough to, to have a conversation on Zoom. I don't mean to interrupt you, but when you said that, no, the not first thing I thought of was 2004, 2005, because those of us who yeah. don't do weather professionally, but are in the newsroom, that was like a parade of eight different storms hitting all the same general areas. To your point, that, and, and that was the last time, and correct me if I'm wrong, the last time that South Florida, this area, really did see that kind of catastrophic 
punch, 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 and not since then. Yeah, it's been, it's been a long time. Yeah, we, we've, uh, you know, in some sense, it doesn't feel this way, but in some sense in Southeast Florida in mm -hmm. particular, um, we have been quite lucky given how active the hurricane seasons have been. Um, and I was, on, I was on the ground with the weather service and the hurricane center in the uh, aftermath of those 04 and 05 hurricanes. And I remember talking to a lot of people on the, you know, whose homes were destroyed and said that they didn't think this could happen uh, you know, uh, in their lifetime, let alone happen twice in their lifetime in a matter of two short years. Um, you know, so these are, these are good reminders. The history is a good reminder of what can happen um, as we move ahead. And that's what insurers certainly are looking at. In the uh, couple of minutes yeah. we have left, Michael, I know that you as a, in your former life as a researcher at the yeah. National Hurricane Center, you had a lot to do with developing the forecasting cones and the tools. And now just in the last couple of weeks, the NHC announced some new futuristic tool, HAFS, Hurricane Analysis mm -hmm. and Forecast System. How, how is this different? What what great things are, is this going to be able to do? Yeah, this is a this is a one of our hurricane models. Our, this is our latest, newest hurricane model that we have, and it replaces existing models that we had been using in the past. Um, the bottom line is that it does give us better, generally better forecast of hurricanes. Um, we have different models that look at sort of different size systems. Um, we're, most of us are used to the big global models, the American GFS and the European model. This is a model that looks specifically at hurricanes that are forming and resolves these kind of finer uh, scale things, features, uh, the more granular features that matter for the hurricane forecast. So we're hoping that with this new launch, with this new operational model, that we have better forecasts this hurricane season. Well, that would be interesting. And, uh, and as a reminder to everyone, we are talking all through the lens of Florida's insurance industry. And I think one of those forecasting models for the long term for the insurance industry is going to be one of those components that plays into affordability and availability. And uh, Michael Lowry, Local 10's hurricane specialist and storm surge expert, uh, you are so invaluable to us for those kind of things. Has has any insurance company ever reached out to you? Just curious. Uh, no, not, well, I shouldn't say never, but um, I have had conversations with the insurance industry, and I know a lot of folks in oh, the insurance industry, but it is a sep it is another business. Yeah, keep so, us posted uh, on that, would you? I will stay with the science <laughs> and the forecasting for now. Take care. Thank you so much. And you stay with us. We'll be right back.